y'all better beware that sometimes your transformation is going to cause a little bit of tension. Yeah, because people are good as long as you're depending on them, as long as you don't know who you are, as long as you're coming to them for whatever you need. But the moment that you discover your own self-worth, your confidence, you start getting the bag, you start doing for yourself, you start exploring more in your purpose, they start acting like, okay, who she thinks she is, who we think he is, baby, I am who God has called me to be, and I'll add more to it before I take anything from it. Yeah, let's clock that T. So I've been reading the, the good, good and beautiful Bible study, right? So I was doing my Bible study and I was looking at the man who was blind in John the ninth chapter. And baby, when I tell you, them people right there was shady, phony. I'm going to give you the cliff notes version, but I'm telling y'all, if you don't have the good and beautiful Bible study, get that. So many of y'all have got it and you can attest this really opens up your eyes to the Bible in a whole different way. It makes you look at it in a different perspective. Like I never thought about this story as being one of shame and even discernment. Let's get into it. So in this story, in John the ninth chapter, the disciples are talking to Jesus and they're like, oh, so there's a man who was born and he was, you know, born with, uh, with blindness from the beginning. Who sins? Him or his parents? And Jesus was like, first of all, the tea is not as hot as you think it is because he nor his parents sin. This is just so God can show his power to him. And they was like, oh, and Jesus said, yeah. And so he said, in fact, let me go ahead and do what I know the father has sent me to do. So Jesus goes to the man. He spits on the ground. He takes a spit and he mixes it with the mud and he places it on his eyes. So that was the first act, right? So then Jesus applied it to his eyes and he said, I need you to go. And I need you to watch in the pool. So he gave him instructions. The man followed the instructions, went and washed in the pool. And bam, the Bible declares that the man who was born blind now has eyes to see. Okay. Sometimes your miracles come at the part of you obeying. Because the Lord told some of us to do stuff a long time ago. And we ain't did it. And now we're confused on where our breakthrough is. And the Lord is like, I need you to go back and check at the last place that I gave you instructions that you did not obey. And it is in that place, although it may be simple, it is in that place where you will find breakthrough, where you will find your next set of instructions. But I can't tell you to go to your next if you didn't obey me in your last. Okay, all right, all right, Let, let's continue. And so you would think, <laughs> you would think that people would have been excited about this. Like, man, like, we are so happy for you. I know you've been asking for this breakthrough. I know that you are tired of living in shame and disappointment and, and, and the what ifs of life. And you're tired of asking people to do stuff for you. And now you can do it for yourself. You think that they would be happy. Mm -mm. These people weren't happy. <laughs> These people weren't happy. The man washes and it says that he rejoiced. He rejoiced, but his neighbors and those who knew him and was like, is that him? Is that the one? I, I know, I know for God that ain't him. And they was like, oh, that's him. That's him. And I was like, but who did that? So then they went to the man. They start asking him all these questions like, who did that? Um, uh, uh, when did he do it? Uh, all of the things. And the man was like, well, it was this man and he came and he told me to do this and I did what he told me to do. And now I once was blind, huh? And now I see, baby, I would have told up that whole concrete out there where they was. Or maybe they was in sin. I don't know. But baby, I would have tore it up. He said, I once was blind. That's all I know. And now I see. They start questioning him. They start bringing the, his mom and his daddy them in. Who did this? And they was like, we don't know. He grown. Go ask him. He got a mouth. Don't ask us about nothing that ain't about us. They went back to the man and he was like, bruh. How many times are you going to ask me? I told y'all what I know. I believe the man was a prophet. But regardless of that, and Jesus is a man that, that healed me. And clearly the father heard him. And that's why I am healed today. What is the problem? Like, why y'all keep on asking the same questions? Baby, that threw that, they threw that man at the synagogue. You hear me? They was mad because they he was like, y'all really about to get on my nerves up in here. They was like, going on, going on. So then they came for Jesus. Then they came for Jesus. And y'all know Jesus was about that life. And Jesus was like, listen here, okay? Jesus told them people, he said, listen, I was the one to open up the eyes. He said, in fact, I commend him for even dealing with y'all foolishness. And he told them, he said, y'all worried about this man who was blind the entire time? He was like, but y'all don't even really know that although he was blind naturally, baby, y'all is blind and y'all is blind spiritually. Yeah. Y'all is blind spiritually. They wanted this man to stay connected to his past because they define him by his past, by the shame that he lived in. And a lot of y'all have found yourself in the same place. You hold it on to mistakes that God done already freed you from. 
free indeed. Thank God I'm free indeed. He has freed you. He's opened the prison gates that the enemy tried to put you in and everybody else tried to put you in. But baby, you won't move because you're so bound and you let people keep you bound. Baby, listen here. Let them people be who they want you to be. Some people don't want to see you evolve. They don't want to see you move past the place that you're at. But I'm telling you, when God places his hands on you, it doesn't matter how bound you are or for how long you were bound. When he sets you free, you are free indeed. You may have been blind once, even in the spiritual, but the Lord is opening up your eyes. And I really believe that there are people who are evolving and leveling up to the place that God has called them to be. But baby, you can only go as far as you allow yourself to go. Jesus can open the gate. He can lay hands on you. But if you're not willing to walk through the doors and walk past the opinions of people and walk past what the he say, she say, you're not going to get far. So I'm telling you now, don't allow shame. Don't allow disappointment. Don't allow your past. Don't allow your mistakes. And please don't allow other people's opinions to keep you stuck where you are god is doing a new thing in your life shall you not perceive it maybe he making waves in the wilderness and re uh, streams in the desert the, the reflection said are there areas in your life where you feel shame think about it are there areas in your life where you feel shame and it said what areas have you lost the belief that you are capable of change in your hands it may not be able to do but baby in the right hands in the hands of god in the huh he had the power to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could even ask or think or imagine. So please don't limit him to when it comes to you. He can do it. Let him work. Watch God work. It, it's an easy thing for him. Baby, go, go get this Bible study. I'm telling you, let the Lord open your eyes. And if the and, and, and if, when he open your eyes, you just hope that he open those beside you. And if not, baby, if your circle change, may the Lord watch between me and thee. While we're absent one from another until we meet again. And if we don't meet again, okay? Don't get the Bible study.